Named after Luigi Galvani, the idea that the transfer of electrons between metals and salt solutions to generate an electric current forms a basis of batteries. Essentially, it's a simple way to get electrons moving. Now, because galvanic cells can be redox reactions, let's look at a typical example. If a zinc electrode is placed in its own salt solution, for example, zinc sulfate, we should visualize that the salt solution is made up of zinc ions, sulfate ions, and water just hanging around. Of course, we expect nothing to happen because zinc metal will not displace zinc ions out of its own solution. However, if each zinc atom in the metal was able to lose two electrons to make it go into the solution, where would those two electrons go? How about this? If we place a copper electrode in its own salt solution, such as copper sulfate, we again must visualize copper ions, sulfate ions, and water hanging around. If the copper ions in solution could gain two electrons, it would form the copper metal, right? So, by placing a conducting wire between these two setups, we could allow this to occur. Zinc metal would lose electrons going into its own solution, and those two electrons would travel through the wires to the copper metal and into the copper salt solution, in which copper ions would gain the two electrons to become copper metal. So now we have the flow of electrons. And because the zinc electrode has lost electrons, we see it has been oxidized, and this is labeled the anode. And because the copper electrode gained it, its electrons, we say that it has been reduced and is labeled the cathode. Just remember red cap, in which reduction always occurs at the cathode. Now these two are known as half cells as one undergoes oxidation and the other undergoes reduction. Now there's a problem. Over time, the zinc sulfate solution will become more and more positively charged um, because of the continuous addition of zinc cations going into the solution. Vice versa, the copper sulfate solution will become more and more negatively charged as copper cations are displaced from solution as they continue to accept electrons forming copper metal. Now, this leads to an imbalance of charges in both solutions. Now, to overcome this conundrum, a salt bridge is used to complete the circuit, which is generally filter paper soaked in, say, potassium nitrate. Now, this allows the nitrate ions or nitrate anions to migrate towards the zinc sulfate solution to balance a positive charge and vice versa for the potassium cations into the sulfate solution, as in the copper sulfate solution, to balance the negative charge. So it's a bit like when you eat teriyaki salmon and rice. When you run out of salmon, you can't just eat rice. So you ask for more salmon. But then you get more salmon, but then you run out of rice and you can't just eat the salmon on its own, so you ask for more rice. So the salt bridge is your reserve of salmon or rice when your dish is running low.